this is a really interesting one because I don't know, in the conversations you have with leaders, I feel like, do you hear that accountability? It's almost like a dirty word that people don't want to use. They, they kind of confuse it with micromanagement. Mm -hmm. So that might be a good place to start. What's the difference between accountability and micromanagement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like, you know, hey, Jason, where are you with those 37 calls? You said you were going to make 37. How are you doing on that? You know, like, it's not, yeah. it, that is in part what it is. It's, it's honoring the commitments we make to each other, doing what we said we're going to do. Uh, but there's so much more to it than micromanaging. Like, for example, and we've kind of already talked about this in the context of transparency, but that's why it's skill number three and we build up to it. Is I say, like, it's very difficult for me to hold you accountable for something. Uh, like, for example, keeping your forecast up to date or delivering the corporate pitch in a good way or making a certain number of calls. Um, if I've never really shown you or told you what the gold standard or what, what I say good looks like, Right. So if I say, you know, Jason, that pitch that you, I've listened to your gong recording, like that pitch sucked and like you did A, B and C. It's very difficult for me to hold you accountable for something when I never showed you what it should sound like to begin with. So when I talk about accountability, it's not just the act of holding you to account and saying, hey, Jason, where are the calls? It's the journey along the way and doing things like showing you what good looks like. It's also things like sharing accountability across the team. So, for example, one of the things I talk about uh, was I was in a situation at Salesforce where my region expanded from five teams to seven teams. Uh, but I was lacking a leader for one of those new, you know, two new teams. And so in the meantime, I was in Toronto, the team was in New York, and I was managing those reps directly while I was you know, trying to hire the leader, in addition to the, you know, the, the six other managers in the region as a whole. So I felt I was doing all these jobs and not doing them particularly you know, well. And so I said, you know what I'm going to do? Let's share the responsibility here. There's a lot of things that we need to do yeah. in terms of the team, forecasts, keeping them up to date, customer events, spiffs, uh, you know, social events. Does, do people want to take on some of these you know, responsibilities? Like, I don't need to do them, right? And so we gave the reps opportunity to wear different hats you know, across the team. Some of the ones that were things that like I said, hey, look, I need help on. Some of the things were things that they came up with that I had never thought of that should be jobs in the team. And they took on those responsibilities. And so part of when I say driving accountability, it's not just like top down, Jason, you got to do this stuff, but rather like, let's share some of the accountability across the team and let, let's take on roles. So you feel accountable to each other, you know, not just to me. So yeah, accountability is a lot more than just like, to your point, like the micromanaging. I mean, it's not micromanaging, but there's lots of different ways that we can get people to do what they said they were going to do and, and improve that across the team.